Psalm 119.105 Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. This is Guav Wordfest. Praise God. My name is Marvin Mawiranjagi and uh, I'll be sharing about patience as a fruit of the Holy Spirit. And before we get into patience, I would like just to give an analogy generally of the fruits. So for there to be a fruit like a mango, an avocado, an apple, it starts from there being a seed. The seed in this case is the word of God. Then the seed is the seed germinates after being given the conditions to germinate. Water, air, light, and it becomes a plant or a seedling. And as it continues, it becomes a tree. So um, for there to be it's a the, for you to have one of the fruits of the Holy Spirit or for you to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit as a whole, you need to, it's a continuous process. It, you don't just wake up and then you have, suddenly you have joy or you have kindness or you have patience in our case, or you have love. You, it's, you have to build it up over time. You hear the word of God maybe concerning that particular fruit and God works it in you over time. So, what is patience? Patience, I would love to define it in two ways, the way I've understood it myself and from now Google. So when I Googled patience, I found that people commonly define patience as the capacity or the capacity there being that there is ability and you're also willing. So the capacity for a person to be able to accept or tolerate a delay, trouble, or suffering without reacting in an angry manner or being upset. And patience, from my experience, is, I would like, like to understand it as waiting with grace. And it helps us to live in this demanding world where there are deadlines, where everyone is always rushing, we can be able to live with joy, peace, with kindness, and it acts like a glue for all other, for all other fruits of the Holy Spirit. It's a part of our Christian living that helps us to continue to have faith and to ultimately believe that we'll find a resolution in God despite unfortunate circumstances that might befall us, despite any hardships that we may be able to experience, we are able to lean back and find that comfort that God will come through for us, that we are patient even in our prayers, that we are patient even as we wait in line, we are patient in our relationships. And I would love us to look at examples of people in the Bible who, you, who showed patience and the various lessons you can learn from them. The first person would love us to share is Hannah. As we all know the story from 1 Samuel chapter 1 from verse 1 to 20. Elkanah had two wives, Hannah and Penina. Penina was blessed with children, but Hannah was not. And Hannah really, uh, Penina taunted and mocked Hannah year after year that Hannah was only being given the choice sacrifice, that one sacrifice, the one that has been segregated after. Penina and her children have also been given the sacrifice to offer to, to God. And, and she just told God that if she was able to get this son, it would alleviate the, or it would remove, it would remove the feeling of sorrow and the contempt that she was experiencing from Penina. And here we're able to see that she waited eagerly for God. Even after praying, she went and waited eagerly, knowing that God would come through for her. So the first lesson from Hannah we learn is patience is waiting eagerly. 
Then the second lesson you learn about patience is patience is waiting expectantly and until the end. I would love us to to think of Abraham before he became Abraham. And God wanted to make a covenant in, with him in Genesis chapter 15. And I would love to read from Genesis chapter 15 verse 4. So um I'll start from verse 1. Uh God makes a covenant with Abraham. After these things the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision saying do not be afraid Abraham I am your shield your exceedingly great reward but Abraham said Lord God what will you give me seeing I go childless and the heir of my house is Elisha of D- Damascus then Abraham said look you have given me no offspring indeed one born in my house is my heir and behold the word of the lord came to him saying this one shall not be your heir but one who will come from your own body will be your heir so god promised abraham a son and abraham was talking about the way he didn't have a, he didn't have any offspring that would be his heir and now he wanted to leave it to his servant eliza and as we see later on in chapter 15 and early part of 16 that Abraham took it upon himself he did not wait he did not wait he didn't exercise total patience he waited for a while and then there came a moment where Sarah offered Hagar the servant for Abraham to have a child with and he accepted so we see there that he did not wait fully or he did not wait expectantly he did not wait until the end because later on he was still he still had a son who we now know who we know as Isaac but he could have waited instead of accepting Sarah's offer for having Ishmael and it was also a uh, we also see we also see from abraham that god expects that total that total surrender that total patience from us another person we can look at is jacob so we've learned that patience is waiting eagerly and patience is waiting expectantly for and until the end from jacob that is in the story the story of Jacob and Laban we we learn that um patience is waiting quietly and joyfully and Jacob had a, a he'd been promised or as as a result of the work that he was doing on Laban's field he worked for seven years and he had been promised Rachel to be his wife but on the night of the wedding um they brought the Jews have that tradition where they bring the wives in the in the night so Jacob was not able to see who he was sleeping with but when he woke up in the morning he realized that he had been conned it was not Rachel who was there it was Leah the older sister and he would have chosen to make a big fuss about it because as you know promises were taken to be very high in the Jewish culture and he waited quietly meaning that he didn't complain in a situation where he felt betrayed where he felt like he's wasted seven years of his life and as you as we'll come to realize patience builds perseverance so Jacob persevered another seven years and waited joyfully for the love of his life Rachel for those seven years he did not complain any day he just persevered all the way through and in the end we can see that he got what he was initially promised that is Rachel as his as his wife and when you when you go through that whole story we see elements of 
people who did not they did not exercise patience like now Rachel and Leah Rachel specifically since she wasn't having children also she decided to offer her servant to Jacob to have children in a situation where she would have just had patience and now that you've looked at the situations in the Bible and what you can learn from these various people about patience we can now look at how can we apply this patience in our day-to-day -day living assuming that you're waiting in line for a matatu at the stage nawasuku uh, sako and you cut the line eh hey, unakata line so you come you meet people have queued probably for longer for longer hours than you and you just cut the line without regard for others patience stems from a place of love as you've learned from Wendy so if you do not love your neighbor you cannot exercise patience so as Julie has taught us that we have to make choices each and every day it starts with that one choice you choose not to cut the line and wait your turn you choose um, I don't know if anyone or any all of you have been to a government office or oh, yeah probably for your ID or your passport those lines are usually very very long so you have to exercise patience not to not to get discouraged or not to feel like out of cure eh not to feel like um it will all that you will always just be waiting there waiting there because it can get pretty pretty discouraging another situation where we can exercise waiting is in a relationship seeing that relationships with others seeing that most of us are in that stage where we are cultivating friendships where we are cultivating relationships even with um, the opposite gender that we may be able to exercise that patience even in our single in our singlehood and, and trusting in god that's also another aspect of patience that we need to we need to learn that we need to trust in god that god will give you a, a wife or a husband at the appropriate time when that time reaches that even in our friendships that you love your friend so much that you're patient with them this in spite of their shortcomings because sometimes we can we can really i would love to say overreact over small things even in our friendships another example of waiting would be even in our education um, as you've seen uh, schools have been closed and there's no plan or expected opening date that has been revealed to us but even in this moment we are urged to have patience and understand that it's god's timing it's god's timing that you will be able to complete school at that time because it may it can be frustrating particularly for those who are in university and you've been longing to finish you've been longing to finish you've been longing to finish but that moment isn't coming so we are we also urge to exercise patience in that aspect of our lives also in prayer because sometimes we pray about things and we expect that immediate response from god that if it's not sasa ni sasa hivi that kama si leo itakuwa next week but inaweza kuwa next year inaweza kuwa in 5 years that we need to exercise that patience and know that god is in control another aspect of our uh, lives where we can exercise patience is waiting waiting as we seek for jobs and waiting even in uh, for the blessing of a child as we've seen with Hannah and i know there are many other aspects of our lives that every one of you can relate a situation where you can exercise patience so what are the consequences of not having patience um we look at Moses and the Israelites uh that time that uh he'd gone to uh to Mount Sinai to get the commandments and the Israelites were not patient enough to wait for him to come to come back they started worshiping other 
other gods or idols. And Moses came back and you can see that most of this generation of those Israelites did not make it to the promised land. Among other things, they, he also broke the tablets out of anger. So we see that Moses was not patient with the Israelites, but also the Israelites were not patient to understand that Moses had gone to God and that he would not be immediately back. It would take time. The only the lesson that would love us to take if you do not remember anything else is that patience is a virtue and virtues just like as we said earlier or fruits of the holy spirit they are cultivated over time so you may not have patience today but as you continue to pray as you continue to read the word of god as god works it in you over time you'll be able to reach that level that you will have patience so even as i wind up um the only place you cannot exercise patience is in giving your life to christ that we can we can be able to understand that god is calling us to him and the lord loves us and is patient with us despite our sins despite our shortcomings each and every day he makes that choice to be or he's already made that choice to be patient with you by having his son who's died on the cross for us for our sins and he's redeemed us in that way and he's calling each and every one of us to him and we are urged that we continue making these choices daily that it may it may not be just a habit but a way of life, a lifestyle, as many other, uh, as we've been taught in other fruits of the Holy Spirit. Thank you.